Our next guest is a best-selling author who comes from a family of talented and award-winning writers. Hallie Efren has eight novels under her belt, including the latest suspense thriller, There Was an Old Woman. We're so happy to have her here today on the show. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Now, Hallie, your parents were screenwriters, your sisters were screenwriters, but you kind of started a little later in life, right? I started much later. And you know, when you're in a family of writers and everyone writes, how do you rebel? You become a teacher. So Is that what happened? <laughs> that's what happened, yeah. So I've taught everything from K all the way through college, and then in my 40s. No kidding. Got with the program. Very good. Well, let's talk about the new book here. <sighs> there was an old woman. I can tell you where the idea came from. Tell us, is it your mother? Is she of some sort Well, of... my mother is tangential to it, but the spark for it came on a, sun, a Sunday morning in the dead of winter about four years ago. I was working in my office. I have a little side entrance colonial with a sunroom, if you know what that's right, sure. where my office is. And like within arm's reach across the, the little grass is my neighbor. And she was carried out of her house oh. by firefighters, yeah. They came, she hadn't shown up at church. And when the firefighters got there, they almost couldn't find her for the garbage, the cats. Hmm. And I had no idea. There I am living like eight so feet close, from her. Right? Yeah. And I thought, because I'm a suspense and mystery writer, I thought, what if a woman, how could somebody create the sense that someone's a hoarder, but they're really not? How could you kind of create the illusion? And I thought, well, she'd have to be blind, maybe, or disabled, or and maybe an alcoholic. And that's where the link came to my mother. So. I see. OK, so the, the book takes place in, a, in the Bronx, in kind it of a does. unique neighborhood. Does, does the neighborhood exist? It does, and it doesn't. <laughs> okay. um, if you're looking on a map, it's about where the East River dumps out into the Long Island Sound. There are beautiful lagoons there. For some reason, Robert Moses never filled them. And there are these really odd, in truth, little shotgun houses, you know, houses where you have to go from one room to the next sure. to get. And they're all lined up along what was once a beach. There was once uh, went when they got weary of the summer. And now it's got little houses where there used to be tent platforms. Yeah, the real neighborhood is, is uh, Sound View or um, Class and Point, but I call it Higgs Point. Okay. And that's because the first owner of the land was named Thomas Higgs. Oh. So I borrowed his name. Makes sense. Now, there are, also, there are other historical events kind of weaved into the, the plot. There are. There are. And um, there's two characters. One is 90-year-old Mina Yetner, and then there's a 30-something year old character who's a New York uh, Historical Society curator and she's curating an exhibit about historic fires in New York City and one of them is the fire that took place in the Empire State Building when it was hit by a B-25 bomber in 1945 Okay. and it was a foggy day it wasn't a terrorist attack but the bomber flew right into the 79th floor the engines flew out of their cowlings one of them shot across the 79th floor and went off the other side, uh, landed on the roof of the building next door. The other one went down an elevator shaft. Oh, wow. Uh-huh, 80-something 80, 80 floors. And the elevator operator on the 81st floor was blown out of her station by the explosion. They put her back in the elevator to go down and get help, and the elevator went into free fall. Oh, wow. And she survived. Oh, no. She <laughs> did. There must be a reason you included this exactly. in the story. Exactly. I understand now. Yeah. Okay, uh, in the book, you, you talk about the vulnerability of the elderly. Yes. It's kind of a theme. It is. Um, would you explain that a little further? Well, I think as you get older, and we're all getting older, even you. I certainly <laughs> am. <laughs> we count things that are changing, and it's, we're always afraid of losing our memory. And it isn't hard to convince someone that they are losing it. And so my 90-year-old character is somebody who has something that someone else wants. And so she, she's afraid that she's losing her mind. And I, I think that's a way that elderly can be preyed upon when they're not losing it. It's not that hard to make them feel uh, very vulnerable and... Uh, and like they're like they're they have Alzheimer's sure. when they don't. I feel like I'm getting a couple of the storylines yeah, from you this. Are, this yeah. is a very good uh, sneak peek. In the book, two of the sisters deal with the death of an alcoholic parent, and yes. we're going to go back to your your mother. Yes. Is that something you had to deal with? 
I did. My mother, my mother was 55. I was 24 when she died. And it was a long haul. She was an alcoholic from when I was very young. And in those days, she might have been, today she might have been diagnosed as depressed. She might have been treated with drugs that didn't exist then. It was so shameful to be an alcoholic and a woman in those days. And she just never stopped drinking. And if you've had an alcoholic parent, you know what a roller coaster it's like. You know, you, you get them back up on their pins and then they crash again and you are exhausted by the time it comes to an inevitable end and and that's what I wanted to write about is that that mixed up feeling of grief regret and anger mm -hmm. that you have when you're dealing with a parent like that and so the young character Evie has a mother who's dying and she's the next door neighbor of the 90 year old oh, okay. yeah so the 90 year old is not the alcoholic Interesting. But, but the, uh, so. Very good. Uh, Hallie, you have some upcoming appearances here I in Connecticut. Do. Let us know where. I do. I'm going to be at Kappa U, uh, that's Connecticut Authors and Publishers University, on May 11th at the Hartford Steam Boiler Center. For sure. And that's going to be very exciting. All right. And the name of the book again is There Was an Old was Woman. An old where woman. can we find it? Uh, it should be in any bookstore. Just about uh, anywhere, just, right? And anywhere online, too. All yeah. right. Very interesting, Holly. Thanks so much for sharing the story. Thank you very much. All right. Coming up next, I recently got a cooking lesson from nine-year-old Mason Partek. We'll share that interview up next. We'll be right back.